Kia ora tato. New research into loneliness in Aotearoa has just been published. It's essential reading for policy makers and everybody in our disability community. An updated version of the report, Still Alone Together, from the Helen Clark Foundation, now includes statistics on the loneliness felt by disabled people. Many of you won't be surprised to know that more than 11% of disabled people reported feeling lonely most or all of the time. In fact, we are four times more likely to experience loneliness than non-disabled people. In this updated report, there is also vital context on the lived experience of disabled people from Prudence Walker of the DPA and Jonathan Mosin from Workbridge. We all know it's really horrible feeling lonely. Not only that it has serious negative effects on our physical and mental health, ranging from lack of sleep and raising of blood pressure through to anxiety, dementia and depression. As the report says, loneliness is a significant public health challenge. Disabled people every day face barriers that exclude us from fully participating in our communities. In addition, two key contributors identified in the report as contributing to loneliness are disproportionately experienced by disabled people. That's unemployment and low income. Employment brings social connection and also, as Jonathan points out, economic independence and the opportunity to feel valued and purposeful. According to Stats NZ, just 24% of disabled people are employed, compared to 72% of non-disabled people. As Prudence explains, low incomes coupled with the other barriers, such as inaccessible transport and buildings, means many of us simply cannot afford to participate on an equal basis with non-disabled people. I would also suggest that loneliness stats begin very early for disabled people. That is, when disabled children and young people are either excluded from education, even in early childhood, or are bullied and isolated at school. An inclusive education system that supports disabled young people to enjoy their rights to reach their potential as valued members of their school community would be a great start. There are six recommendations in the report to reduce loneliness and its effects, including making sure people have enough money so they can live with dignity and participate in their community. Creating friendly streets and neighborhoods, which to me, and I know many of you, means accessible transport, spaces, buildings, and homes. And thirdly, prioritizing services and supports for those most at risk of being lonely, which includes disabled people. You can find a report from the Helen Clark Foundation on its website and read more about this. This is really incredibly critical reading for all of us. And finally, I want to acknowledge Prudence and Jonathan's insightful contribution to the report. Namahinui.